Morgan Brennan with some special guests today. Hey, Morgan. Hey, Carl, that's right. So public investors have been waiting a long while for a chance to invest in what I'll call this emerging new space economy. Today, Virgin Galactic makes its debut here at the New York Stock Exchange as a SPAC. You can see right now the stock's trading up about 5% right now. Joining me in a first on CNBC interview, Virgin Galactic founder Sir Richard Branson, Social Capital CEO Chamath Palapatia, and Virgin Galactic CEO George Whitesides. Good morning to you all. Good Congratulations. Morning. I think Thank this you. is probably the first, I mean, fireworks, literally. It's probably the first time I've ever seen pyrotechnics on the floor of the New York Stock no, Exchange. We, we, we like to make a splash. Absolutely. And, uh, and, um, <clears throat> no, it's, it's very exciting. I mean, we've, we've had 15 years of developing Virgin Galactic to, uh, to, to, you know, to, to the stage where it's just put five people into space. Um, and um, now it's wonderful to uh, enable the public to come in and invest alongside us. And um, uh, I've been here on this floor to launch uh, Virgin Mobile, Virgin America, and one or two other companies in the years past. Um, and it's all gone really well. And obviously, we, we hope um, that um, our spaceship company will go as well as the others. In space, in the space business, there's a lot of talk about milestones and, and firsts. Uh, in terms of the fact that Virgin Galactic is now the first publicly traded space tourism company, commercial human spaceflight company, how big of a milestone do you think this is for commercial spaceflight? I think, it, I think it's a very big milestone. Um, if the public wants to you know, take a little, uh, you know, and, and dabble a little bit in a spaceship company, or own a little bit of a spaceship company, they can now do so. Um, we have this wonderful ticker, which I've never heard of the word ticker before, but uh, STCE, and that's how people can... I was impressed you got that, by the way. <laughs> well, I, I'd love to tell the story, but I'm told I'm not allowed to. But it, was, it was actually the, gener the generosity of a, another exchange that, that let us have it. So, um, but, um, no, it's, it, 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 it's, uh, we've got off to a great start. I mean, the share price went up 11% on Friday and another 5% today. And, um, and um, yeah, we've we managed to completely fund um, uh, Virgin Galactic through to well, when it breaks even. Um, and so, exciting time. Yeah, and Shamath, as an investor in this company now, I know one of the things you've come on CNBC and talked about in the past is how impressive the gross margins are, given the fact that service hasn't actually started yet. How are you thinking about those gross margins when it does, and what does that mean for profitability for this company? Uh, I think the profitability of this business is going to look as good as one of the best software companies around, and that's why I was so excited. You're in the business of hardware, but it looks like software, and that is very different than many of the other technology-oriented hardware companies that have gone public recently. So this is a business that at scale will have almost 70% operating margins, which is incredible. And it's a testament to you know, the billion dollars that Richard has invested before I came here. And then the team that George has built that's been able to build something that is largely now de-risked and ready to commercialize and monetize. What do you think, especially now that there's going to be quarterly earnings reports, what do you think investors are going to want to hear from this company? I think there's going to be two vectors that are really going to matter. The first vector is to describe the demand. So there are already 600 plus customers that have paid, um, you know, $80 million, about $120 million in future business. There's three or 4,000 more after today. I suspect there'll be many more thousands after that who want to give us money. And so I think understanding that demand will be really important for people to uh, get comfortable around the long-term projections. And then the second is about George's execution ability and his team's path to getting these rockets in the air uh, on a more and more frequent basis. Let's talk a little bit about that, shall we, George? I, I, know, guys, I know the company is targeting next year to begin commercial service, 600 person backlog right now. How big is this market for suborbital space tourism? And I guess longer term, how many people are going to be paying $250,000 for a ticket to space? Well, the exciting thing for you is, is that um, we're in the, the highest growth part of the luxury sort of services experience. It's out of home luxury experiences is the part that's growing the fastest. And that's basically what we're doing. And so, you know, globally, we think around 2 million people can experience this uh, over the over the coming years at this price point. And then, of course, over time, we'll be able to reduce that price point. And at that point, the market just explodes. Like it's, you know, 10 times as many of 40 million people. So we think it's like a huge market. And it's going to be capacity constrained for the near, near, near term. Now, publicly speaking, there really is no direct comparable for Virgin Galactic. In the private market, there is one uh, 
comparable company, and, and that's Blue Origin, Jeff Bezos, Blue Origin. How are you thinking about competition? Well, you know, um, I think what Jeff and the team over at Blue are doing is great. You know, we think that we've got a really attractive service offering, um, but, you know, ultimately, we think this is going to be a capacity-constrained market. Like, more people are going to want to go to space than either of us can bring in terms of service. So we think we've got an amazing experience from our runway takeoff to runway landing and then a very safe rocket motor and just a wonderful experience in space where people are going to be able to you know, have these amazing suits and float around the cabin and experience the wonder of looking down at planet Earth. So I think it's uh, it's going to be a great market for both. Of course, you're talking about the space suit, which I see Richard is wearing here. That was designed by Under Armour. You unveiled this a, a couple of weeks ago as well. Um, one of the questions that gets put to me a lot by prospective investors is, um, how do you know it's going to be safe? Right? And, um, and, and so when it comes to space, okay, when it comes to space, I mean, space is hard. Human space flight, even harder. Uh, it, it's got to basically go off without a hitch, near perfect, no real room for, for error here. Um, how do you ensure that that's the case, and, and what do you tell them? Well, it's actually funny. I was a customer first, and so me and my wife are going to go, Chamath's going to go, Richard is, of course, going to be in the first commercial flight, so we're, yeah. like, uh, very confident that this is going to be a safe experience. Basically, what it comes down to two things is, one is we've got a very safe architecture that can abort at any phase of flight, and the other thing is that we've tested it extensively. So, really, our system has been in test for over 10 years, and what we've been able to do is just really drive up the reliability of the system so that we feel a uh, real high confidence in, in the system itself. Yeah. Hypersonic travel has come up, this idea of point-to-point -point travel around Earth, um, and certainly seen, at least by some of the analysts that are starting to look at this industry as, as the big long-term opportunity. I know it's been discussed with Virgin Galactic as well. Was that always part of the plan when you started this company? It was. Um, the reason that we, one of the reasons that we built our spaceship like an airplane was because um, you know, by flying this airplane at three and a half thousand times the speed of sound, I'm uh, sorry, not the speed of sound, three and a half thousand miles an hour, um, uh, we're already testing a, um, a, a spaceship or an, or an airplane uh, that, that can travel from point to point at, at tremendous speeds. So, we just tied up with Boeing, um, and we're going to be exploring point-to-point um, -point travel with them. And I think the reason they invested in, in Virgin Galactic was because um, you know, we've had 15 years of experience in this uh, today. How much was the hypersonic piece of this puzzle the driving force for you to invest? To me, it really represents the long-term optionality in the business. So the way to think about it is, today what we're buying is a really interesting, very lucrative, super high margin space tourism business where we'll be able to take some of the profits to iterate on this other idea. Long haul travel today, 10 hour plus flights, people are spending 300 plus billion dollars a year. And Morgan, a hypersonic plane can take a 10 hour flight and reduce it to 90 minutes. So the way I think about this is we're going to go and pioneer and really push this idea of space tourism, getting people to space. But as Richard said, once you do that, you get a test bed of technologies. We have a free option on hypersonics. And when we deliver a product in the five to 10 year time frame, we will be able to directly disrupt a 300 plus billion dollar revenue business for the airlines. I think, I think um, one, one other important thing to point out is um, it, the environmental footprint of what we're doing. If you have a, a land-based rocket and, and you're, you're sending uh, people into space from the, from the ground, it's going to use up an enormous amount of energy. Uh, by doing it the way we're doing it, we, we can put somebody into space for uh, less than the environmental footprint of sending somebody on a Virgin Atlantic plane up across to London to New York and back. And I think that's going to become more and more and more important in the years to come. Um, so we're bringing the, the cost of putting people into space down dramatically as far as the environment's concerned. Before I move on here quickly, George, when am I actually going to be able, as a customer, when would I actually be able to get offered and buy a, a hypersonic train? Well, I think you're looking probably in the maybe five-year time frame, something like that. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, you can get to SpaceX. That's right. In the meantime. Um, so and then you get this thrown in. Yes. It's very fashionable. There's been a lot yeah, of commentary very nice, very nice on these shoes, too. Well. Yeah, the, the, the shoes are rather, rather, well, I don't know, yeah. they're sexy. Oh, my God, I haven't done mine up. 
So, Chamath, um, I want to get your thoughts because we've seen a number of companies go public this year. There's been a lot of talk, particularly coming out of Silicon Valley, that given the way shares of some of these big tech companies have traded, yeah. um, that the IPO process, the traditional IPO process, is broken. Given the fact that Virgin Galactic now just directly listed on the exchange through Social Capital's SPAC, do you see this as a model that other companies are going to adopt? I do, and I hope that this is a really good uh, litmus test and a case study of the best of what this can be. Pure technology companies founded by iconic founders, built by great people who are like sober and just want money to build the business, should look at things like direct listings and should now look at things like SPAC. So I've been involved in two processes this year. One is a direct listing of Slack where I'm on the board and now uh, Virgin where I'm chairman after this transaction. Both of these two transactions got everything that we wanted to done, done. We avoided traditional processes in a way that limited management distraction. And now we're set up to just run the business. So this entire process for us, from start to finish took three and a half months. The company wow. got all the money they needed, and George and his team has been able to focus on running the business, which is the most important thing. So I think these kinds of transactions and processes are the future, and I think a lot of that traditional oligopoly or you know monopoly run by Morgan and Goldman are probably those days are numbered. Yeah, and just because we're on the topic of this IPO process right now, I do want to get your thoughts. You came on CNBC back in September, talked a little bit, pretty critical of WeWork. A lot has happened since then. The ouster of Adam Newman, we've seen SoftBank swoop in to basically take the company over. Um, do you think it's on a sustainable path now? I still think that the big question is that they have $48 billion of lease obligations. And the way that they engineered this transaction was to avoid the fallout of that falling onto the SoftBank balance sheet. But this is a really precarious company. If there's any downtick in demand, any downtick, meaningful, uh, these guys are gonna have a very difficult time figuring out how to make the economics of what they've created work. That being said, the product market fit is unquestionable. Um, and I think any company, large or small, probably doesn't want to sign a 10-year lease anymore. We would all love a beautiful office in a beautiful environment that's pretty turnkey. I just think that the way they execute it, it may turn out to be not sustainable. Yeah, I think probably the exception there is Spaceport America, which is not an office and is pretty amazing down in <laughs> New Mexico, um, which are Virgin Galactic will be headquartered. Uh, I also just want to get your thoughts on Facebook, too, because that's in the news. Between earnings this week, Mark Zuckerberg testifying on the Hill, Last week, a torrent of uh, criticism and certainly scrutiny right now. Is it warranted, and what do you think it means for the company going forward? I think that they're at a very difficult point, and it is the intersection of business logic and morality. And at some point, your morals and your ethics conflict with what the right business logic is, because if you follow your morals and ethics, you may make changes to the business that literally uh, suppress the value of the business. Um, the other alternative is just to say, you know what, um, let's just take a hear no evil, see no evil approach and we're going to maximize business value. Um, they so, do that, they do the right thing. so far, the their end, choices have been the latter, but I agree with Richard, they should do the right thing. But in the end, in the end they'll, they'll, they'll survive much longer by doing the right thing, even if it has a short term not to their okay. end. I completely agree with you. I completely agree with you. And so just to bring this all back, speaking of trips, back to space right now, um, given the fact that we do seem to be ushering in this new era um, of space, how are you thinking about it longer term? Because in addition to Virgin Galactic, you do have Virgin Orbit. And this idea of a so-called billionaire-led space race, is that the right way to think about it? <laughs> I'm afraid you, you do have to be in that sort of billionaire bracket if you're going to go into the space, space business. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's good, I obviously have a bias, but I think it's good that uh, people who've got money are investing in, in exciting new things, uh, employing uh, you know, thousands of engineers and, um, uh, and you know, pushing the barriers forward. Um, so yeah, we've got, we're having Virgin Galactic next year, we're going to have an incredibly exciting year, I'll be going to space and other people will be going to space. Um, and, we, and Virgin Orbit, which is not actually part of the Virgin Galactic company, uh, that should um, have, have put a, a big rocket from a 747 into orbit um, and either start to put satellites um, around the Earth in a much more affordable, better way. All right, gentlemen, thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you. If you need a journalist,
chance to take one of these trips to the edge of space, I would just like to throw my name in the hat. <laughs> Congratulations on Virgin Galactic going public today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry. Guys, I'll send it back over to you. Hold well on. Hold well on. If you want to know how to go out on top, the man we're about to talk to is doing just that. Spotify turns up the user growth. Shares are soaring today.